most of us are familiar with A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, the tale of Ebenezer Scrooge and his miserly ways, and his encounters with these three spirits of Christmas past, present, and future. It's a classic. It's always on this time of year in all of its versions, even the Muppets. And Scrooge is given a second chance, and he responds. He has a conversion experience, a change of heart. And as he wakes up from this dream or this encounter, he asks an important question. What should I do? What do I do now? It's the same question that was asked of John the Baptist in today's gospel. It's the same question that the rich young man poses to Jesus elsewhere in the gospel. Teacher, what should I do? How can I live a good and holy life? That's basically the question that Scrooge is asking. But I think he knows the answer. He can't live like he's been living. He has to make a gift of himself now. He has to go out and love all of those around him, all of his neighbors and family and friends. And he goes and does just that with great joy. You know, two of the main things that change right away is that, first of all, he was miserly and miserable, bitter, cantankerous, and now he's happy and joyful. And the second thing is, whereas before he was hoarding everything to himself, now he did make the gift of himself with his time and with his possessions. And you know, part of what sets him off as he opens the window, he asks, what day is it? Because he's lost all track of time. And the answer comes up to him from the street, it's Christmas Day. And it's like a switch was flipped. He just went into frenzied action, buying turkeys and all kinds of stuff. But it's that knowledge that it's the day that God's own son was born into the world for our sake, that great gift that just propels him to go out and make a gift of himself with complete joy. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. It's Rejoice Sunday, Gaudete Sunday. It's not Christmas Day yet, but we're called to rejoice because the good news is proclaimed to us by John. Jesus is near. Jesus is coming. And so we rejoice in anticipation of this great gift of Jesus. And John the Baptist is getting excited. He's been preaching and prophesying and baptizing for a long time. So long, in fact, that people are starting to wonder whether he was the Messiah. And he has to set them straight to say, no, I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. But he is coming. And you haven't seen a thing yet. Because when he comes, he will come baptizing with fire and the Holy Spirit. And the world will never be the same again. Fire refines. Fire purifies. And as John preached repentance, a fire was kindled in the hearts of the hearers, a longing for more, a longing for Jesus. And Jesus came and dumped gasoline on that fire. And sending the Holy Spirit. He ignited it through forgiving our sins, healing our hurts, restoring us to relationship with the Father, and sending us the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's what He came to do. And we were never the same. We were not left the same. He left us this beautiful gift of hearts on fire, hearts that have known the love of God. 
and that fire is meant to keep burning. In the early church, there were men and women who went out into the desert to live, to be close to the Lord, and people would seek them out for their wisdom, and their counsel. And they would say to the people who sought them, you need to become fire. You need to become fire. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in you. Nurture that fire. Fan it into flame. Don't ever let it die. Don't ever let it smolder. It's meant to burn brightly before all. How do you do this? People would ask. Come before the Lord and tell him you're willing to do whatever he wants you to do. Say it is, as it is in Scripture, Here I am, Lord, your servant. I have come to do your will. Make yourself a gift to others. And when necessary, say to the Lord, Forgive me, for I have sinned. Make yourself a gift to God and others and receive the gift of God into your life continuously, and that flame will burn brightly It will burn warmly. And the byproduct of that will be joy. A joy that the world cannot give. A joy that's deeper than feelings or emotions. A joy that's deep within our souls. Souls that have been touched by the living God. A joy that expresses itself sometimes even in inexpressible groanings, the scripture says, because we know so well the love that God has for us. And so Paul can say to us today in the first reading, rejoice, I say it again, rejoice. Choose joy. Again, not based on feelings or an experience, but on a decision to follow Jesus, this Jesus who is so near He has come and he's coming again, but in the meantime, he dwells in us. He dwells in our hearts. And so we can come to him, Paul says, with our prayers and our petitions, revealing our hearts to him as he reveals his heart to us. And then we will have peace. Peace which is beyond all understanding, he says, that will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Peace and joy. Two of the great gifts we celebrate at Christmas time. Joy to the world and peace to people of goodwill. That's the good news the angels proclaimed. Rejoice, it's Christmas Day. Now there's another character in a Christmas Carol that's worth mentioning, and that's Tiny Tim. And Tiny Tim was not much in the eyes of the world. He's a little boy, poor, crippled, sickly, and if things didn't change, dying. But he knew the love of his family, and he knew the love of his God. And a fire burned in his heart and a joy was evident in his life that enabled him to love all of those around him like Christ loved, to see the goodness in each and every person, even in Ebenezer Scrooge. And so, as we approach Christmas, let's ask God for three things. First, let's ask God for hearts like Tiny Tim's, that see the spark of the divine in each and every person, that see the image and likeness of God, Quite often around Christmas, we have people around our table that we have a hard time getting along with. Let's have that kind of heart that can love these people as Christ loves them. The second thing that we can ask for is the joy and peace that Scrooge had on Christmas morning. Knowing that everything is a gift and wanting to make a gift of ourselves to God and others. And the third thing is that expectation and longing for Jesus and the fire that he brings that John the Baptist had. 
that Jesus is near, that the kingdom of God is evidence, that hope. If we have these things in our lives, then Christmas Day is every day. Because every day Christ is born anew in our hearts. Hearts that are on fire, hearts that are filled with joy and with peace. So as Christmas approaches, may God bless us, everyone.